Okay, good morning, traders. Welcome to this live intraday strategy webinar on SB Trade Desk. Today is Tuesday, November 27th. Good to be with you guys this morning. Jaya, Iman, Kamal, we got Kelly in the house, Christopher, Mark, Michael, Muhammad. Great to see everyone here this morning. So, things are starting to move. You know, volatility has kind of been kind of duddy in the start of the weeks here. So it's been hard to get excited about stuff, but we're, we are seeing some movement here today. So um, we'll go over last night's update, DXY, dollar CAD, gold, uh, Sunday's update on Euro, Aussie, Aussie Yen, uh, and Kiwi dollar. I'm currently in a Euro, seeing if this bounce here gives us a little bit more uh, upside. DXY went a little bit further than expected, but we are getting the pullback here. So Lots to discuss. As always, guys, feel free to throw out any questions, trade setups you want to review um, at any time. So we are getting some uh, Fed commentary coming out. Clarita saying the just policy outlook if inflation above target, talking about the threats of raising rates too high, uh, all stuff that we've heard before. So let's just jump right into price action, guys. Um, here's what the DXY looked like last night. So the ideal scenario was to find failure at this 100% extension, okay, uh, or in this zone. Right here, you have the 618 of the decline. You have monthly open resistance, 9708. Then the 100% extension, if this is corrective off the, hot, off the low there, is 9717. Now, you saw us in overnight trade, uh, or just this morning, actually push through, kind of slipping below again here, but we're looking for more signs of exhaustion. If this is going to work, as far as the euro bounce, as far as uh, some of the other majors that we're looking at, we want to kind of see failure here early in the week um, for the DXY. Again, daily chart, you know, we're essentially still in the monthly opening range. We never gave it out. Here's what it looks like on the intraday. So kind of overshot it a little bit, right? But if this is going to work, we kind of need to see failure early here in the session. So we're not really getting strong divergence. A lot of people will look at this and say these two points are divergent. That is true, um, but I don't like the crossover for the week. And typically the best divergent reference points would be like these two. So if this was a higher high and then this was a lower high, the immediate previous bounce. So it's not quite there yet. I see your point. It's not quite there yet though. Um, so we'll see how this pans out. Looking for dollar exhaustion. So where does that leave us? Um, well, first of all, really quick ahead of this, guys, do keep in mind that we do have some event risk heading into not so much today. Uh, we get consumer confidence numbers, but tomorrow, okay, we get those second annualized uh, read of third quarter GDP. We were something that to note here, markets were expecting an uptick from 3.5%, which is what the print was, to a revision of 3.6. That expectation has been brought down again, okay, so just from yesterday. Expectations now that we're going to see that GDP print for a third quarter come in at 3.5 again. Um, and GDP price index at 1.7. So if that comes in as expected, the real shift goes to the FOMC minutes. That's on Thursday. I don't know if you'll get much of a hit there, guys. Keep in mind, it's all about the December read markets as it stands right now. Uh, oops. Mm, might have lost the link here. Hold on one sec. Here we go. So as it stands right now, markets are still pricing in a 79% probability. Okay. This has been hovering between like 90 and 80 for the last like three or four weeks. You saw it dip down a little bit last week when we got um, some more of that Fed commentary coming out, but you're basically priced in for uh, December. The real tell in the minutes is, I mean, I don't really think you'll get a tell in the minutes specifically because this is a quarterly meeting in, in December. So you're gonna get the Fed um, you know, updated assessment, the quarterly assessment as it pertains to inflation, growth and all that good stuff. And you'll also get the presser with Jerome Powell. Don't forget, starting January, every Fed decision will have a presser. So that basically leaves the door open for the Fed to really give us a lot, or give them rather, a lot more flexibility in the timing of subsequent interest rate hikes. Um, so I'll leave that at that. <laughs> um, 
Okay, let's jump right in. Any questions on DXY beyond this? Have you ever gone to 120 minute chart then looked for time uh, convergence points is due to arrive, for instance, on 9741 as pictured? Have you ever gone to 120 minute chart then looked for the time the convergence point is due? Yes, absolutely. And Ty, that's actually a really good point. Guys, That's that should be assumed across the board. When me and Jamie give you a confluence region or we highlight a confluence region, that's exactly what we're doing, Ty. We're saying over the next, you know, some odd hours into basically, if you look at the time stamp here, into the close of trade or tonight, this is the level that matters. And that's why throughout the course of the week, you'll see me put the same chart, but those levels will change because we're taking the time value into account. Absolutely, Ty, 100%. You know, this level will become less important as the inflection or the convergence with that median line dissipates. So as we get out into here, for example, in time, if we're trading here, that level is less important. But right now, absolutely, that's what we're highlighting. Make sense? So um, that is DXY. Is there a way to see the time? Um, not really, aside from hovering your cursor over it. If you just look down on the chart, right, that's the only time... It's the only way you can kind of read it at that point. Dollar CAD. DXY, that's number one. Number two, Dollar CAD. So for this one, I kind of wanted to see a pop higher. I think we still might get it uh, to get short. So I was talking about this last night. Here's what the update looked like. Um, DXY, Dollar CAD. The ideal scenario trade here, guys, is that you see some sort of exhaustion either ahead of the high day close for the year, 3340, or, excuse me, a pretty big FIB confluence here at 3375, 3385. One of these two levels is where I'm looking for exhaustion. Uh, if we take this back out to the uh, daily and weekly charts, guys, remember for all of my charts here on the intraday page, if you don't see the weekly and daily uh, charts accompanying them, I see some new names in here, uh, they'll always be one click away. So I kind of alternate with the updates. If today I give you just a 240 minute, the next update will give you the 240 daily and weekly uh, and vice versa. If today here you see all three charts, then the previous update will have just the most recent um, you know, near term chart. So for dollar CAD, here's what I guess to show you this real quick first. The weekly charts look like last week. We didn't make it into that 3375 level. Again, that's that key region. We turned lower. Here's the daily, we failed just ahead of it. We pulled back and we're still looking for that possibility for a stretch into that region. Here's the daily chart now. Okay, so here's the stretch higher, pulled back. If we get one last launch here, it'd be really nice uh, for failure in that region. I can't press this ahead of that. It's either that for the short or a break back below this key region that we've talked about for weeks and weeks and weeks, 3130, 3155, that would put us back uh, for a move lower. So again, in my humble opinion, this is still not operable for me just yet, but I do want to track this closely. If the dollar really just collapses and DXY sees that downside break, you might not get that last extension to 3340, but I think that's the risk. And for dollar CAD, you know, it's been, how do I say this? I mean, Objectively, if you use this as the monthly opening range that you made it break here on the 9th, you came back, tested it as support and launched higher. I wouldn't be surprised to push a high you know, towards the end of the month. So that's why here I really want a little bit more of a confirming trade or at least confirming near-term price action to show us that we're turning over. It's not there quite yet. Here's what the intraday chart looks like. Okay, even if you push this into a 60, I was kind of looking for something this morning. You know, quite quite tough. Even that divergence a little bit, if you woke up or in, we're trading in Europe and you saw that divergence, higher close there, lower closing the momentum, that pullback still didn't even get a, a break of the range lows for Asia. So like, you know, it's going to be a, a process. I think it tries to push higher first, looking for exhaustion up here. What do you play? the? I would not play the low. I mean, that's just my opinion. All right, Charles, like I don't want to try to get uh, aggressive on trying to play the long from here. And the reason I say that, guys, and some of you might be thinking, well, this is an uptrend. Why wouldn't we just look to buy on the dips? It's because of where you are in trend. Okay, this has been a what? This has been a 3.8% rally and change, nearly 4% without any major corrective moves to the downside. 
I can't buy or get excited about buying at fresh, you know, four month highs. So if we get the pop higher, look for exhaustion in your 3340, 3375 on a like real strong stretch. Um, other than that, we need to at least, at least see a break of the objective weekly opening range lows. That converges on slope, and that break would shift us at least that key support target at 33, uh, at 31, 30, 31, 55. Any questions on this? Um, Again, you're pretty moot on CAD, on, uh, CAD data, rather, until the end of the week. We do get uh, GDP numbers out of Canada on Friday. Okay, so a little laggard here on dollar CAD. Hopefully, this thing gives us uh, some sort of definitive price action near term. The last one I wanted to update, Iman, are you in the room? I thought I saw you earlier. Yes, you are. Gold. You still following that? So... Pretty big levels here. I think it's a make or break week here for gold, at least on the near term front. Um, look, the charts are all pretty clear as what levels we need to be focused on. It's just that the momentum isn't there quite yet. Here's This is the kind of important chart here, but I guess let me just show you from the weekly on down. Let's go, let's go in order. Here it is. The major critical resistance barrier is still 30, uh, 1236, 1238. This is it. You got a basic 38.2 of the yearly range decline. You have a, um, what's the weekly chart? This is the 200 week moving average. Swing lows from uh, December of last year. And both of those converge on the 50 line for this slope. We came into this region uh, early in October. We slammed down from there. Now we're holding this near-term slope. If this is a bearish or a bear flag, you know, basically a break below this region would spell disaster. You go look for a move all the way down towards key support, bullish invalidation for the broader multi-year uptrend. That's 1185. Um, our favorite scenario is that we see a topside pop, but we haven't really seen momentum start to give us that yet. Here's the daily chart. So a little bit of an adjustment. Um, like last week, we were looking at this slope. Things were getting kind of hairy here. So we made a slight adjustment to those highs. And now you see not, not two touches, but three, four touches, giving us a little bit more conviction on that slope. Um, really basic. That's the top side break we need to see near term to give us the rally, not even for a breakout, but just for a test of the monthly opening range highs. Converge on the December lows. Again, that key region, 1236, 1238. Um, now, near-term support is also very clear in that you have the monthly open. You have that former swing low from May of last year, which again saw support. The break was resistance, resistance. The break again, acceleration, support. We sailed through on both sides. That converges on the monthly open and those former swing lows. Okay, it gives you 12.14, 12.15. So the immediate focus is on a break of this range. Top side pop, that's your breakout level. Above 1238, you're looking for resumption of the broader advance. Um, so my point being is that near term, the risk is still that we could drop again towards 12, uh, 13, 12, 1214, 1215 rather on the downside. Here's what it looks like on the intraday. So ahead of 1213, 1214 is this region right here. And this is what I was looking at last night. I was saying if this is going to bounce one of these two regions, we should be looking for a support. Looks like a decent rebound, doesn't have that much push behind it, so I wouldn't get too excited just yet, um, but we're looking for exhaustion off one of these two levels. This would be the ideal play, 12.17. It's 100%, two equal legs off the high, a basic 38.2 off the low, sort of a washout spike there, fake everyone out, then rip higher is my favorite move, but at the end of the day, if this breaks, the risk is, again, that key 12.14, 12.13 pivot, Bullish inval we've raised now until 1209, which is a basic 618. And again, that converges on the slope for this formation. Does that make sense? So if you're if you're looking to attempt long entry, 1217 is where you want to see hold. Um, if you're if you're holding long entry, a pop above this median line, which has or this slope, which has a three point touch at this point, would confirm 
uh, a near-term upside bias. If we wash out sub 1217, um, you know, on a daily basis, 1214 is what we want to watch. But intraday, even if we were to drop to 1209, as long as that parallel holds, um, I'd like to see I'd like to see gold higher. This break that we got here was kind of messy, but this was on strong divergence. And if you guys remember the basic slope resistance we were looking at from here, you see that resistance, 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 support, support, building divergence. So all things held constant. We're, we're still, you know, we're still in this near term uptrend off of the uh, the August lows. And I want to see this trend line break to give us the go ahead. The immediate risk is for a dump into this region. Questions, comments, concerns. Iman says, amazing. <laughs> Cheers, Iman. All right, so that is number three. Let's jump into the majors. Number four, Euro dollar from uh, the Sunday update. It looks like this. So I'm I'm long here. You know, Euro needs to hold this spot if this is going to work. Uh, here's the Sunday update. As the markets were coming into focus, we talked about the reversal that we got uh, off that long-term weekly chart trendline support earlier. The daily chart also showed us coming to a nice confluence region. 113.12 is the November open. Objective stuff. Not Mike Boutrous's level, not uh, not Jamie's level, no one. It's, it's the objective monthly open. The 100% extension, two equal legs off the high, is 13.20. So that's a nice spot to look for support. Um, if we're going to see a rebound in the euro. Also, it lines up pretty decent with these swing lows we made in August. Long story short, that's where we're looking for support. Intraday, you even had some slope there, just lower, 1295. We talked about that level as well. You have a pitchfork off the lows here from November, uh, from I guess this is October and November lows. Um, you know, I was just extending some parallels to see if we got any flexion. They looked pretty clean. You know, this would be the level that we'd need to hold. That's bullish inval. Here's euro now. Oh, I guess I should just jump into the intraday chart. It needs to hold this move here. We're there now. You can't make this stuff up. So we we, we slipped below uh, that 1311 level, but their slope support comes in like a charm. Ty says you bought the low. I didn't buy the low. Uh, I was long from like 1320. Uh, stop is against the um, is against the lows here. So basically, we're at, we're at break even right now. If it if it moves lower, Ty, this is the ideal scenario you want to be in. Why? Because it's your near term bullish inval. If it breaks this low, we'll have clear indication, right? Uh, you'll be wrong pretty quick, and you know the spill down to the downside leaves room till 1270. I don't want to be in a trade that's you know 40 pips underwater. So that's the risk, well-defined risk. The move we need to see breach, guys, is 1369. This is just a 618, uh, 382 rather, excuse me, of the near-term decline. Converges on channel resistance. So if we get through this, good, you know, I think, yeah, good on you. You got room to like 1408, 1413, um, and that would be the next upside target. But this kind of needs to hold now. If it doesn't, again, there's, there's a 30 pip move to the downside there. Bullish inval, uh, 113.11. So, you know, this is what we need to see hold. Yes, I would say it's this low right here. You have to trade anything that you take on the long side tie on this trade would need to be against this low. Maybe a couple pips below, but I wouldn't go any further than that. Because if it breaks that, not only are you breaking this major FIB confluence, 100 off the high, my favorite plays, 618 off the low, but also the monthly open. If this gives out, it's going to probably wash out pretty hard. Iman says, what do you think right now, Michael? Will it hold or will it not? I don't know, Iman. I try not to jump in. I try not to micromanage a trade once I'm in. You know, it's, watching it is not going to change what it's going to do. So looking at this from a momentum standpoint, no, it doesn't look all that, it doesn't look all that appealing at this point. It's kind of just... It's one of those levels where you have to be in it to win it. If it's going to bounce, this is this is the mark that needs to happen. If it doesn't, um, it's going to wash out. Now, if you look at this from a 10-minute, for example, standpoint, uh, and you just look at the momentum signature, this is bearish still. You saw resistance at 60, right? That's exactly what we don't want to see in bullish trends. Um, we want to see set, uh, you know that 60 break into 70 or at least above 60 and support at 40. 
So it hasn't broken 40 to the downside just yet. If this 60 pullback breaks 40, probably going to be the washout of price below that low, right? In that case, you had actually a short trigger jump in. Iman, does that make sense? Once I execute, I put the stop I put, and I, I put the limit and I just let it play out. Now, a lot of times on the way up, I'll shave off the position. That's something that's, you know that I do best is kind of just scaling out a position, bring a stop up, get really protective. But at this point, um, it's just sitting at support. This needs to give out. Also, one thing, if you look at just basic range bound price action here, if this is the initial weekly opening range, you rip into a high, you sat at that low all the way till here. It's the open uh, just ahead of the European open. If you broke to the downside, this is a key region, this should have been a little bit more accelerated. The fact that you broke the initial range lows and kind of dambled into key support and you're still trying to test that, well, it suggests that it doesn't have enough punch to get through this just yet. Just yet. Uh, yes, it does. Thank you. You're more than welcoming, man. So we'll see if Euro gets a little pop here. And by the way, if we do clear these European range highs, once we get through this, um, you know, I'm really quick to go break even on the stop, especially in the current market environment we're in, where we keep getting these you know, double back reversions. So uh, just keep that in mind. All right, what's next? Uh, Aussie, anyone getting involved in that thing? Here's what Aussie looked like earlier in the week. Into the open of trade. So for Aussie, the broader picture on this one um, is we're looking for a settle low, or we're just basically looking for an exhaustion low. So it looks like it still could get that drive into 72. That was the focus uh, you know, yesterday. We need a breach above 72.86 to validate at least resumption. Remember, excuse me, the daily chart on this is pretty clear where we are, right? We were working with this channel for so long, four-point touch. The break was really messy. We took a parallel of that from the yearly high. And although it looks messy here on a closed basis, you only got that one tag into resistance we broke back below. So again, that's the level we need to clear, 72.80. This is the breakout for resumption. So right now we're still playing ping pong right between these two levels um, in Aussie. Near term chart looks like this. This is a pitchfork I added yesterday. I didn't want to present it on the intraday page just yet because we didn't, I don't know, I don't have too much conviction on this. But what I do know is that the median line or the 50 line here has been decent support. Obviously the median line caught that low really, really clean. A little breakout here, a little breakout here. But it would suggest if you do clear the weekly opening range high, there's that 72.86 level. Okay, if we get through that, you're on right into that key pivot region, 73.28, uh, 73.36. The same region we've been watching for months and months and months. So I know this chart might look a little cluttered here with all these lines. Um, but just some things to keep in mind. This is that longer term trend line. We we're looking at the daily chart. That's this off the yearly highs. You can see again, even though we broke through it last week, resistance, resistance, we even put resistance ahead of it. So this is why for me, we need to kind of clear this to get the Aussies uh, to the upside. I'm not holding any positions on this. As far as trying to find a new position on this, the ideal scenario would be sort of a jackknife into uh, the 50 line for the upslope and then a rip higher. Uh, if we don't get that and you rip higher first, if it breaches through on the pullback, I would look for support right in that 100-day DMA again, the 100-day moving average, and then find entry there for, for the vault through. But um, near term, at least, play it on face value. All it is is just a basic weekly opening range. Here's your weekly open. You set a high. You set a Monday low. Look for a break of that range. So the only um, change to the levels here is just the addition of that pitchfork. Again, I don't have, I'm not super confident with it. So if you want to add that on, um, it's just off the recent highs. One, two, three. Any questions on Aussie?
Okie dokie. Moving right along. Aussie N. This is number five, number six. So Aussie N. Similar scenario. I, uh, you know, obviously the upside has been playing out a little bit better here. The level that we want to see cleared is just a bit higher. If you add, well, let me show you the, where it was earlier in the week. Here's the Aussie N trade from the Sunday update. So last, uh, you know, last week we were talking about this key region, 81, 22, 81, 33. That was sort of the risk. If we saw a downside break, it's exactly where we bottomed out last week for the rebound. So early on to this week, you know, it's either a long off here or off this key region of support, the lower parallel, and that's a 50% retracement. So you saw us start the week, we just start to move up to the upside right off the bat. We came right into the 618, that's where we found resistance. Here's the pullback, we're still holding that near-term range. Now, if I look at this from sort of a measured move, like this, look where that 100 comes in. And again, those confluence regions, my favorite setups. Okay, 100 off the low, 618 off the high. It's the same exact thing that we're looking at um, with the euro, right? 100 off the high, 618 off the low. Well, Aussie N's doing that same move. And those are usually, you know, typically can be um, really nice uh, inflection points. So my point being, this key region is now defined by the weekly opening range highs. So key resistance, also the breakout level to go back towards 83, 83, 25, huge region up here. Um, or if it's going to fail, you know, this is sort of where you'd want to see failure. I don't have any positions on Ty asking, do you trade Aussie? And sure, I trade anything that I see clear uh, levels in Ty. Um, but I don't, I haven't had any positions on this today, you know. Uh, it might be a decent exhaustion trade, but more, more, what's the word I want to use? I'm more of the mindset to look for the breach. Might not happen, but if we get a breach through 84, uh, 8247, 8250 here on the pullback, I get back long looking for, for a move into the upside. Also keep in mind, you're, you're, you're coming up on the median line for just a basic formation. One, two, three, median line resistance, break saw acceleration, median line support, a little messy here on these last stretches. But if we pop through this, you're looking for a resumption. If the correction has more to go, this is where you want failure. Now, I say that sort of as a caveat for near-term traders, but at the end of the day, guys, it did complete two equal legs. That's the whole idea of why I think you could see the top side break. If this is corrective, and you can make an argument for a five-wave affair here, but let's say this is corrective, two equal legs down was 81.23. That's where we bottomed out. So you know, a breach above this would sort of put us back on the resumption trade. Long story short, 82.47, 82.34, this is the key region of resistance. Look for a reaction here today. Um, and again, the breach here is what would suggest resumption of that broader pitchfork. This is gonna get messy, but I just wanna see what this looks like. Bear with me one sec. Wow. So again, parallel action, just off the lows that we made for last week, 1.2 point. Take a parallel of that, extend it off last week's high. Right? So it kinda of actually puts the, the focus on this region just higher, around 82.64. Don't go nuts with it, but that's getting choked up pretty close to the high day close. So. Um, it kind of just popped out at me. You know what? Yeah, let's just let's just leave that like that. Watch, watch this inflection point here for Aussie N. Here's the daily chart that we've been following. Break below the median line, checked the lower 50 line, caught support here, caught support here. You also have 100 day moving average, a basic 38.2, rebound. Here's the median line. If it's gonna fail, this would be the region to look that last time or make that last attempt at the lower parallel. If this breaches, 
you're looking for resumption. And you can even make an argument there's a bull flag there of sorts. So again, one of those trades where you're still trading in the range, guys, but um, certainly the levels are clean. It's just we need some momentum push here to get something going. Any questions on Aussie N? Last but not least from my end is that Kiwi trade that we've been following. So Kiwi looks like this. It's um it's moved lower, but we're still holding the level of support. I recognize that um on the swing side of things, we were pretty close to the limit. You know, we were only looking for that stretch towards um, 6740, but that 6752 level, guys, I've been showing you this um, retracement for the last couple of updates. So I know Jamie's limit was just below it, but this is something we've, I've been watching. It's a simple 100 off the high. Uh, to start off the week, it came right into the lower parallel for the slope series that we're trading off the highs. Here's what the update looked like. Oh, Ty says, what price is the overhead Aussie N confluence, please? Oh, sure, Aussie N. So let's call it 8260s, 82.63 to be precise is where I would say uh, that confluence region basically stands. What I was going to say is you could probably dump that 618. I love that confluence region, but just for the sake of, you know, what we've been looking at here, if you remove that and you had to stress a region, you know, this is kind of the region I would look for. 47 into, you know, 63. All right, Ty, makes sense. And then don't forget the high day close is just higher. It's just a cluster region. You know, it's, it's tough to trade into it. Um, and you can see obviously the kind of turns that we've gotten there previously already. Uh, divergence is good. If we close the candle here, there's no divergence yet. Ty, what price, what, 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 Time frame you're looking at. No divergence yet, right? So price action is making another high. Even on a 10-minute chart, the oscillator is making another high. But if we get a decent divergence signal, yeah, it would be good. I just don't think you have it there yet. Remember, you're not looking at the wicks. It has to be the close of the candle. So the candle has not made a higher high yet. Okay, don't get fooled like that. It's very, very, uh, a lot of people make that mistake. The wicks have no bearing. It's got to be the candle closes. So quick way, Ty, is just bring it into a line chart. Lower, lower high, lower high, right? This is good divergence. See this? Higher high in price, <clears throat> excuse me, lower high in the oscillator. So that was a good divergence signal. Um, heck, even this was a good divergence signal. Now, again, it's a weak signal because it's above 70, but here's price action pressing a higher high, the oscillator pressing a lower high. That was a nice entry for the downside. Same thing here. Divergence, even if you took the short from here with a stop against the high, it still would have panned out pretty well. Okay, so you're, you're not there quite yet, but that is something I, I would want to look for. Absolutely. All right, so um, where were we? Kiwi. So here's what Kiwi looked like earlier in the week. Um, to start off the week, we highlight 67.52. And again, this is one of those trades where if this is just sort of two equal legs down, a corrective wave pattern, you have slope support, you have 100% extension, 67.52, that's level to watch. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm gonna need a break above 68.20. That's what we said on Sunday, sort of to validate the break to the upside. At that point, you'd be looking for 68.74. Uh, that 200-day moving average is obviously moving um, a moving target as the average moves, but uh, the ideal scenario is panning out in that the weekly opening range is taking shape just below that target. So on this one, again, um, if you're holding a short on the swing side of trades, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bail on it per se. I like that Jamie's stop is above this, 
So, and I agree with that. If it breaks 68.20, it's probably going to launch right back to the highs. Um, but this is the near term bearish inbound. Okay. Uh, as far as the target is concerned, that 67.40 uh, target, I have even lower. If we break this 67.50 target, confluence for slope comes down near 67.25. Okay. Remember that the broader trend here is still, you know, we still broadly like the upside in Kiwi. Beautiful, you know, pullback from a very nice region, but you're starting to get closer to that slope support. Again, those lateral levels we just looked at in the intraday chart, you know, it start to wind down and start to look for exhaustion here. Below 67, it's still the same level. Below 67, you're in trouble for, for Kiwi. So even if, you know, we kind of dump into this region, it still might be an exhaustion trade. Below this region, you're really risking um, much, much larger decline. So immediate focus is, is lower still. If we get the break below 67.52, watch that slope region. Both of these, as I said last night, targets are on Monday, targets of interest for exhaustion long entries. So it's either a long off this or a breach and a retest for a long here. The short that we've been holding, these are levels of which if we get through, takes them off. On a secondary approach here for 67.52, take some off, go break even or better. Uh, we're already break even on the entire trade, but in in, in essence, you'd want to break, bring that stop even lower, um, and look for that last dump towards you know 67.30 is what we have target. 67.20 is that confluence. Makes sense, guys, for Kiwi. And again, a trade which has very little event risk as far as New Zealand's concerned. So this is probably going to be mostly driven by dollar price action. And again, just to highlight, I can't stress this enough, the weekly chart for Kiwi. Look at the region we're trading in, guys. It's really big. Okay. It, it, technically, we did get a weekly close above. Look. But it didn't last very long. This so is the region that we were watching. So, you know, that's still kind of the major key point we need to get through, at least to clear this downslope. Support, 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 right? Three divergence points on all those levels lower this year. Here's the reference, first major slope resistance. Whoops, ooh, there we go. Okay, so, uh, you know, if we're gonna pull back, this would be the level to pull back from, but, that pullback, ultimately, we are looking for a topside break of this long-standing channel formation or pitchfork. So a little bit, that's a little bit more hesitant to try to long side on Kiwi. It's been, you know, I'm still been citing that there is a downside bias. The long for me would get interesting towards the median line here or towards this region. By the way, I don't want to confuse anyone, uh, but I was looking at the slope yesterday and I'm kind of torn. Okay, if you take this slope, and just adjust the highs for the high high and the low for not that secondary low we're using, but the low low. The upper parallel actually caught that perfectly. And on the way down, the median line comes in here. But guess what? We're already looking at that region on the intraday chart, which is why I didn't change it. Um, and the median line here also gets pivot resistance, a break, and acceleration. Whereas here, the median line saw perfect resistance, perfect resistance hung around, then the first level caught resistance. So this is kind of a good drill on, you know, recognizing that we're not going to, there's not one slope that'll work. Um, and when you have the slope adjustment and it's still highlighting the same levels, it's further conviction on the trade. So whether I put the slope here, which gives us support a little bit lower, or whether I put the slope here, which gives us support a little bit lower, the same levels are being reflected, right? The upper parallel here converges on the on the 200 day moving average, right? Whereas here, it showed the convergence earlier on that slope to the downside. So whichever one is gonna end up being in play, guys, my point being uh, is, you know, we have to basically find support in Kiwi just a little bit lower from here for this thing to hold the immediate upside bias. Okay, so I just wanna put that out there as that caveat, I'm not, um, I'm not going to keep switching the slopes back and forth, but just keep in mind that, you know, if we do adjust that slope, it basically caught the high here. 
which means this pullback may still have a risk for a move towards the median line before resumption. All right, questions on Kiwi. <clears throat> that is number seven. Interestingly enough, and I just wanted to kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, bring this as a caveat. Earlier in the month, uh, I guess last week, I should say, we did cover, I just put you a daily chart here because I was just saying, look, this thing is coming up a big support region. There's no near-term setup yet. Here it is on the 19th. Um, there was no near-term setup in play, but we were coming off a huge level of support. Here's what it looked like, Euro Kiwi. That level was 165. Uh, 20 into 165.68, huge region. That was the 2018 low that we made in January and then the low day close that we made there as well. Basically caught support here in the June decline. Here's where it was back on the uh, 20th or 19th. Okay, here's the chart now. We bounced, we held that parallel we didn't close above it. You see what this chart looks like? And this is why guys taking it back to a line chart sometimes can be so beneficial. You look at this and you say to yourself, oh man, that broke the median line. We should be looking for the extension to, into 2018, right? The open. But line chart tells a very different story. Tells a very different story. Why? Why does that happen? Well, that's because the actual price action that happened above this parallel was on a gap open. So you never got a daily close above. And that's what we necessitate to validate a break of, um, of a longer term slope, right? Is we want to see a daily close above or a daily close below to validate it. Bring this into a line chart. We still haven't done it. Okay. Studying price action. Really important to keep that in mind. So while, you know, the wicks look like, and even the bodies on this gap looks like we were higher, we never really closed this. So the threat, guys, is still for a move lower. Still for a move lower. And ideally, the way I would love to see this play out, and again, I hate to tell sort of just congest your hopes here, but basically, if it moves uh, down, I'd love to see another drive into this region on divergence and momentum to offer a better entry for a larger uh, near-term recovery. This is just a basic pivot, guys. We can't ignore it since the start of the year. So I was looking last night, is there something near term, right? That would suggest, all right, maybe there's an opportunity to play, to play that last downside move. Well, it looked like we had a little near term uh, bearish flag pattern here. Uh, so what I want to show you today is if this is a kind of initial breach or initial break of the weekly opening range, we should be looking for resistance ahead of the weekly open. Uh, I know that's kind of near the highs here, but basically look at this near term slope. It brings to a 60 minute chart even clearer, okay? This is all off these two reference points. Again, parallel caught these two reference points. Sat there for support, sat there for support. If this is a break, we wanna kinda see resistance um, at former channel support from one last drive lower, and I think you buy that one. I think you buy that one. Now, is there anything in near term, Nope. 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 Nothing yet. So we'll look to see if we can't get some pattern here. But my basic premise for this one is I want to see if it grinds into a lower low. I think it would be a decent opportunity to try to fade this. A lower low in price, but still holds this key zone, especially if you get daily divergence. I think that would be a decent region uh, to try to test it to the upside again. It's just a key support zone. But keep this on your on your menu, especially if um, you know Kiwi pulls back uh, as we are looking at, right? That's Kiwi weakness. That's Euro Yen to the upside, uh, or Euro Kiwi rather to the upside. So a way to play the Kiwi weakness without actually getting involved in the dollar, uh, if you want to kind of try to avoid that. All right, guys, that's I kind of blew through everything today. That's everything I have on my list. Let me know if you have any questions or trade setups on specific uh, trades you guys are looking at.
All right. Well, if there are no other questions, none for me, says Iman. As always, thanks. Have a great day, says Mike. Hey, guys, um, if that's it, yeah, then have a, gr have a great – we'll end it here. Uh, tomorrow, midweek strategy webinar, as far as I know from Jamie, is still on point. Uh, and then I'll come in on Thursday uh, for the final strategy webinar for the week. I'm out on Friday, Monday, and Tuesday of next week, guys. Just a quick heads up. So there won't be uh, a Monday, Monday webinar on Daily Effects or a Tuesday webinar here. I'll be back on Wednesday. Uh, and if, you know, God willing, the flight comes in on time or everything, we'll hit, we'll hit things on Wednesday morning um, with a strategy webinar. So just keep that quick scheduling uh, point in mind. And... Watch those uh, U.S. consumer confidence level. It's coming out at 1,500 hours, so a little bit on point here coming up. All right, guys. Best of luck trading. I will see you all on Wednesday. On Thursday, rather. <laughs> Cheers.